Well, it was a beautiful day. We were just sitting down to dinner. In fact, my wife was just getting ready to close the sliding glass door into the backyard. Um, and all of a sudden, we all heard the explosion. And uh, I saw her back off from the sliding glass door. Uh, we all stood up and looked out and saw the flames. Now we have literally a half a block of homes burning. I immediately thought it was an airplane because uh, we live so close to the airport. We just saw people running up the street away from the fire. We encountered uh, an elderly lady in a nightgown in a wheelchair in the middle of the street, just screaming. And my son and I decided, well, if this lady is here in the middle of the street by herself, maybe there's other people that might need some help. So we jumped out of the car and started knocking on doors. Uh, and I happened to walk into the home, the, the, the home that she actually had come out of, because uh, the front door was open. So I ran down the hallway and I looked to my right and I saw another elderly lady in her bed. Went to get her and I helped her out. My son followed me in. I went to the right, he went to the left, and he took another lady out. A police officer had come on a motorcycle and he was starting to clear the street. And he was telling everybody, you have to clear the street, you have to go, it's, it's, it's too dangerous. I looked at my son, the motorcycle was right in front of us, and I said, Bobby, there's, there's more rooms down there that we didn't check. Uh, when we got into that back room, the, the very last room, we found another lady there. The 2010 San Bruno, California pipeline explosion is a reminder of how important it is to prepare for emergencies, big and small. Emergencies can happen any time, and what you do in the first few minutes can mean the difference between life and death. This training video targets the owners, administrators and staff of residential care facilities, and focuses on the evacuation of care homes with up to six residents licensed by the state. Residents can be elderly adults, children with special needs, or even homes for developmentally disabled adults or children. Most emergencies occur in a single home. Our goal is to provide you with the training tools so you will know how to evacuate your home in an emergency. Let's look at what we'll cover in this training. Prepare. Know when to evacuate. Take action. Evacuate your care home. Evacuate out of the neighborhood. Each part of this training can be viewed separately to make it easier for you to learn at your own pace. For more specific information in your community, contact your local fire department or emergency response agency. We would like to thank you in advance for taking the time to watch this very important safety training. Let's begin. Well, it was a beautiful day. We were just sitting down to dinner. In fact, my wife was just getting ready to close the sliding glass door into the backyard. Um, and all of a sudden, we all heard the explosion, and uh, I saw her back off from the sliding glass door. Uh, we all stood up and looked out and saw the flames. But now we have literally a half a block of homes burning. I immediately thought it was an airplane because uh, we live so close to the airport. We just saw people running up the street away from the fire. We encountered uh, an elderly lady in a nightgown in a wheelchair in the middle of the street, just screaming. And my son and I decided, well, if this lady is here in the middle of the street by herself, maybe there's other people that might need some help. So we jumped out of the car and started knocking on doors. Uh, and I happened to walk into, walk into the home, the, the, the home that she actually had come out of, because uh, the front door was open. So I ran down the hallway and I looked to my right and I saw another elderly lady in her bed. Went to get her and I helped her out. My son followed me in. I went to the right, he went to the left, and he took another lady out. A police officer had come on a motorcycle, and he was starting to clear the street. 
and he was telling everybody, you have to clear the street, you have to go, it's, it's, it's too dangerous. I looked at my son, the motorcycle was right in front of us, and I said, Bobby, there's, there's more rooms down there that we didn't check. Uh, when we got into that back room, the, the very last room, we found another lady there. The 2010 San Bruno, California pipeline explosion is a reminder of how important it is to ensure our communities are prepared for emergencies, big and small. This is especially true for staff who manage residential care facilities. This training video targets the owners, administrators and staff of residential care facilities, and focuses on the evacuation of care homes with up to six residents licensed by the state. These care homes can provide services to a variety of residents, including elderly adults and developmentally disabled adults and children. Responders need to be aware of the complexity of what is needed to evacuate these sites and where they are located in your jurisdiction. You may expect that staff from a residential care facility may come to you asking for advice, or that there may be an opportunity to reach them through citizens' programs, such as the Community Emergency Response Teams, CERT. The objectives of this training are define a residential care home, illustrate the need to know where these homes are located, and the number in your service area. Demonstrate the special circumstances and challenges that are required to evacuate this population and to make them more self-sufficient. So, how did we get here? Uh, people that work in a, in a facility like that, first of all, should be prepared for emergencies. Uh, one of the ladies that, uh, that was a caretaker fled from the explosion, and that's why the ladies were uh, left alone in the home. If I didn't go in there, I don't know if anybody would have gone in there. Through our fire district annual inspection process, and after a number of care home tragedies, we were able to identify a gap in understanding and expectation within the care home environment. Also, in evaluating how to meet federal requirements for assisting those with special needs during an emergency, our fire department initiated a working group with local residential care facilities. The group's objective was to address fire and life safety issues. Our working group helped us understand the need for training at the residential care facilities and to educate first responders, as well as the public safety community, on the needs of this population. We identified 75 residential care facilities in our jurisdiction, over 155 square miles. How will you find the location of the residential care facilities? In California, there's a website provided by the Department of Social Services where you can search and identify all of the care facilities in your area. For those located outside California, search for your state's department responsible for community care licensing. Let's look at what we'll cover in this training. Prepare. Know when to evacuate. Take action. Evacuate your care home. Evacuate out of the neighborhood. Each part of this training can be viewed separately to make it easier for you to learn at your own pace. We would like to thank you in advance for taking the time to watch this very important safety training. Let's begin. As an administrator or manager of a care home, you need to teach your staff about the safety procedures already established and required by state fire and health agencies. All care homes must have an emergency plan. The plan includes an emergency evacuation map, emergency equipment, and procedures. The plan identifies the roles and responsibilities of staff. You have tools in the home to help protect yourself and residents. Remember, big fires start small. The fire extinguisher you walk by every day can stop a small fire before it becomes a big fire. Take the time to learn how to use it. 
The smoke alarms and pull alarms that are located throughout your care home will alert you of a possible fire and give you valuable time to react and evacuate if needed. These alarms do not automatically call the fire department. You'll have to call 911 yourself. Check the date on smoke alarms. If the smoke alarm is 10 years or older, it should be replaced. Replace batteries at least once a year, if not sooner. Test smoke alarms monthly. In some cases, fire sprinklers are required. Sprinklers will buy you the most time to evacuate the home. Locate the evacuation map posted in your care home. It will show you at least two direct exits out of the house. Practice evacuating out of both exits. It's a good idea to mark the meeting place that's outside in front of the care home. Know where the fire doors are and how they work. Identify them on your evacuation map. Fire doors are solid core doors with a smoke gasket at the top and each side. When properly closed and latched, the fire door adds time to allow you to get out of the house. Keep wheelchairs and other needed equipment with the residents and available. Maintain emergency contact information for all residents, care home administrators, and emergency agencies. Keep a copy in a safe electronic format for access after evacuating. There are additional steps you will need to take if you are instructed to evacuate out of your neighborhood. For instance, you should prepare a go kit in advance for each resident. These kits should be kept in an easily accessible area and should stay with the resident during an evacuation out of the neighborhood. The kit contains clothing, food and water, medical supplies, and your emergency plan. Introduce yourself to your neighbors. I've been meaning to come over and introduce myself. Tell them about your residential care home. This is right next door. Oh, really? okay. Introduce yourself to the police. Introduce yourself to the fire department, as well as local community emergency response teams. They should be aware of your care home location before an emergency happens. We encourage everyone to take the time to practice evacuating. Practice with other staff or able adults. Trade off role playing so that you will understand what it's like to be the resident. During drills, you may discover things that block access or problems taking residents out of the home. Do your best to correct these problems as you can. Know where your meeting place is. Let's review. Learn about the life safety tools already in place. Test your smoke alarms. Change batteries at least once a year or sooner. Learn how and when to use a fire extinguisher. Fire sprinklers give you the most time to get out. Know how you will evacuate. And know at least two different ways out of the house. Know where your meeting place is. Meet your neighbors. They may be the first available to help in an emergency. Introduce yourself to local emergency response agencies and volunteers. How will you know when it's time to evacuate? In a home fire, you may hear a smoke alarm ringing. Wait right here, I'm gonna check the smoke alarm. I'll be right back. Or if someone noticed a fire, they may pull a manual alarm to notify everyone. You may smell or see smoke. You could be notified by a knock on the door from a neighbor or a passerby that sees signs of danger that you are not aware of. The fire sprinkler system, if you have one, may start spraying water. The sprinkler will only activate in the area where there is actually fire. If the house is on fire, Go call 911. Come back here. you need to evacuate. 
Let's review. You will know when it's time to evacuate if you hear an alarm ringing, if you see or smell smoke, a knock on the door by a passerby that sees the emergency, or your fire sprinklers are activated. In the preparing segment, you learned how important it is to prepare yourself, your residents, and your staff for emergencies. This included learning evacuation routes, meeting places, and the use of fire doors. You've heard an alarm, seen the smoke, or been told by someone there is an emergency. It's time to take action. Stay calm. You're thinking. This is my responsibility. How am I going to get my residents out? The first thing to do is call 911 from the closest and safest phone. 911, what's the address of your emergency? The 911 operator will ask a few questions. Okay, tell me exactly what happened. I see smoke. Okay, if you And we'll give you instructions. We'll be on the way, okay? Okay. Engine 31, engine 34, engine 39, paramedic 31. Respond on the residential care home fire at 110 Avocado Court. Custom Ashby Way, in 730. Now, notify visitors and staff of the emergency. We have a fire. We need to take Bob out. As you inspect the rest of the house for the cause of the alarm, close the fire door and bedroom doors. I need to close the door. Identify which residents require least assistance, more assistance, and the most assistance. Ask yourself, is there anyone here to help me? There's a fire. Give them directions and on what to, to do. And need to get out of here now through that door. Start by moving residents who need the least amount of help. Now move those that require more assistance to the safe side of the fire door. That way. Hi, we need to get you out of here. Let me help you. Direct those who can exit the home to the closest exit and tell them to go to the designated meeting place. Ensure the fire door is closed behind you when residents are on the safe side. Let's review. You understand the need to evacuate. You know this is now your responsibility to direct actions and evacuate. Keep calm. Determine the level of assistance each resident needs. Take action by giving directions to others, closing doors, and moving residents to the designated meeting place. In the Take Action segment, you learn first steps to safely evacuate the care home. Identify which residents require least assistance, more assistance and most assistance. Who goes first? Instructing residents to go to the meeting place. Directing staff and visitors to help evacuate others. Close fire doors. Close doors to all rooms on your way out. Ask yourself, who do I move first? Who can I move the quickest? If they need help moving, Use the proper technique to move the resident. We will discuss two methods of moving residents. The wheelchair and the blanket drag. If residents are non-ambulatory, a wheelchair is always the best and quickest choice for helping any resident evacuate. Place the wheelchair at the side of the bed. Assist the resident to sit up. Briefly support the resident in the sitting position with their feet on the floor if possible. Place your arms under their armpits with your hands on their shoulder blades in a hugging type position. Pivot the resident into the wheelchair in one motion. Quickly but safely relocate the resident to the meeting place. Take Charles. Every okay. time you leave the house after assisting a resident, you will need to make a decision. Is it safe for me to go back inside to assist others? Stop. Ask yourself the following questions. 
Are the firefighters here? Do I see smoke or flames from where I want to re-enter? Do I smell gas? I think I'm going to go back in. If you decide to re-enter, touch the door before entering. If it is hot, do not enter. If it is safe to go back inside, ask yourself, who is still inside? If there's no wheelchair, Come on. use the blanket drag. Caregivers should be positioned on both sides of the bed. Each caregiver grabs the bedding tightly. Lift the sheet and the resident off the bed and place on the floor. Grab the sheet on both sides of the resident's head. Slightly lift the head and body up. You can modify these techniques as needed based on individual residents and caregivers' physical abilities. Drag the resident to the designated meeting place. Everyone okay? Yeah. Good. Oh, here they come. Once the fire department arrives, you no longer need to go back inside the home. Firefighters will ask you questions about residents that may still be inside the house. Is there anybody left in the building? Your job is to answer the firefighters' questions. Yes, there's one more person in the back bedroom. And comfort your residents. And call your administrators. Emergencies like house fires can happen very quickly. As you have now learned, it is very important to be prepared, think quickly, and take action to evacuate your residence. Let's review how to evacuate your home. If they need help, use the proper technique to move the resident. The wheelchair is always the best choice for helping any resident. If there is no wheelchair, use the blanket pull method. Drag the resident to the designated meeting place. You must decide if it is safe to go back inside to rescue other residents. If it is not safe, do not go back inside. Wait for the fire department to arrive. Your job now will be to aid and comfort residents at the meeting place. Emergencies may also be much bigger in size. During and after a big emergency or disaster, help from emergency responders may be delayed. Or they may not be able to respond at all. There are additional steps you will need to take if you are instructed to evacuate out of your neighborhood. For instance, the go kits you have already prepared for residents should be with the resident during the evacuation. Set up a meeting place that is outside your neighborhood. This could be another care home. Make an agreement with other care homes before an emergency. They may have the capacity to take in your residence temporarily during an emergency, while other arrangements can be made. Create an agreement in advance with a bus or car service to transport the residents to this location. Get a neighborhood map and identify multiple routes out of your area. If you are required to leave your neighborhood, you may learn about the emergency from a neighbor, a passerby, or a person in uniform may knock at the door. Hello, the Santa Monica Police Department. We've had an emergency. We need everybody to evacuate as soon as possible. You may get a phone call from a local community warning system that sounds like a computer talking. Emergency alert. Be sure to answer the phone and listen to the entire message. Evacuate the South Glen community between Main Street and Hilltop Lane. Evacuate now. If the call is answered by an answering machine, listen to the message as soon as possible. You may also learn about an emergency by news broadcasts on television, radio, or social media. You may get instructions on which direction to travel, where to go, areas to avoid, how much time you have to leave, or 
if you need to shelter in place. Learn more about shelter in place in the emergency plan documents included with this video. The order may have been given to leave your neighborhood. You need to determine how you will get your residents out. It's time to take action. If you have an agreement with a facility, such as a care home, call them. If you have an agreement with a shuttle or car service and you have enough time, call them. If the emergency prevents shuttles or other help from reaching you, call your neighbors. They may be able to help. If you haven't made these arrangements in advance, or the emergency blocks access to the resources and they cannot get to you, what will you do? Turn on your radio and listen to emergency broadcasts. Where's the emergency? What roads are blocked? Where are there shelters? How will you move the residents? Now that you know where to go, load your residents in any vehicles available to you. Now, how do you load them? Load residents who require least assistance first. Put them in the vehicle's farthest back seat. Residents that need the most help will be the last to load. Make sure you have everyone's go kit and any documentation. Know where you're going and know how you're going to get there. Turn on the car radio to listen to instructions as the conditions may change. Drive safely. Pay attention to road signs that can provide you information. Pay attention to authorities directing traffic. Let's review. Be sure all residents have their go kits when they evacuate. Make agreements with other residential care homes to temporarily house your residents. Respond to emergency calls or alerts. Listen carefully to the full message. Evacuate residents from least assistance to most assistance needed. And load residents from least assistance to most assistance needed. Know where to go and how you will get there. And leave the area safely. My son and I realized that there were more bedrooms in that house that we hadn't gone through. And the very last bedroom on the left, there happened to be a lady in a, in a hospital bed. On the door of her bedroom, it said, no smoking, oxygen is in use. And I look out the window and there's all we see is fire. And the back fence was on fire and every, the house behind them was on fire. We grabbed the bed to try to get her out, but it wouldn't fit through the, the door jam. So we just picked her up out of the bed and put her in the wheelchair and uh, proceeded up the block out of harm's way. By viewing this video series, you have learned how to prepare. How to recognize when it's time to evacuate your care home. I see smoke. What actions to take. How to evacuate residents from least assistance to most assistance needed. And finally, how to evacuate out of the neighborhood. The, the very last lady that, uh, that we took out, her son contacted me and uh, told me that he was so happy and pleased and thanked me so many times for what we did and uh, that, his, that his, mom, his mom would like to see me. And uh, so uh, my son and I went up to visit her uh, and you know she was 96 years old. We went up to see her. She was uh, very happy to see us. We hope that this experience inspires you to make your care home safe and ready. Thank you for investing in readiness.